the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill was introduced into Parliament uh, recently. In this video, I'm going to explain a little bit about the protocol itself, about the bill and what it does, and in particular, whether the bill will breach international law. I'll suggest that it does. So the protocol is part of the withdrawal agreement that the UK and the EU reached as part of the uh, Brexit process. The protocol itself is there in recognition of Northern Ireland's special political circumstances. Essentially, it allows for Northern Ireland to remain part of the European Union's single market for goods. This means that goods can move freely across the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, avoiding what is referred to as a hard border. But in turn, that means that there has to be some form of trade border, some form of checks on goods as they cross the Irish Sea between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The UK government takes the view that the way in which the protocol is being applied is causing significant problems, including in relation to trade. And to, att to attempt to address those problems, the government has introduced into Parliament the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill. How does the bill work then? The bill defines large parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol as what are called excluded provisions. I'll talk in a moment about the significance of something being excluded under the bill. But in terms of what actually is excluded, the bill says that many parts of the protocol, including significant provisions concerning customs, the movement of goods, and also subsidy or state aid rules, are to be treated as excluded provisions. It also gives to ministers wide powers, both to make laws in the place of excluded parts of the protocol and to define additional parts of the protocol as excluded, thereby by expanding the range of provisions in the protocol that are covered by the bill. So what's the significance of something being an excluded provision under the bill? To understand that, we have to go back a couple of stages. Under the withdrawal agreement, which is a binding treaty between the European Union and the UK, the protocol has to be given effect by the UK in its domestic law. That means it has to be given direct effect so that people can uh, rely on it and it can be applied by courts. And it has to be given primacy over other parts of domestic UK law. In other words, the protocol is required by the withdrawal agreement to have a very similar status to that which European Union law itself had prior to Brexit. Now, in order to uh, meet that obligation, the UK enacted a particular section, Section 7A, of the European Union Withdrawal Act 2018. Section 7A accords to the protocol and to other relevant parts of the withdrawal agreement itself the status that is required. It gives them direct effect and it gives them primacy over domestic law. That's the position which applies now. But how would things change under the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill? The difference that the bill would make is that it would override the special status that at the moment Section 7A of the Withdrawal Act gives to the Protocol. This in turn would allow the UK, as a matter of domestic law, to deviate from, to ignore, and to make fresh domestic law in place of all of those different parts of the protocol which are deemed to be excluded by the bill. This would be a clear breach of the UK's obligations under the withdrawal agreement. So too would the part of the bill be which says that UK courts need not take into consideration uh, the case law of the Court of Justice of the EU in relation to the protocol. That would run counter to the requirement in the withdrawal agreement that UK courts must have due regard to EU case law on those kinds of issues. So does this mean that the bill, if enacted and brought into force, would breach international law? 
The government argues that it wouldn't, but I will suggest otherwise. International law binds the UK in the same way as it binds any other state. Although the UK has a sovereign parliament, which means that it can make any domestic law it wishes, and which means that that domestic law will be lawful within the domestic legal system, this does not affect the fact that the UK is still governed by the general principles of international law. In particular, it can't evade its treaty obligations simply by getting its sovereign parliament to enact law to that effect. These principles are made clear in the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties. Article 26 says that treaties are binding on the parties and they must be performed by the parties in good faith. Meanwhile, Article 27 says that states cannot invoke their internal or domestic law to justify a failure to perform a treaty obligation. Against that background, how can the British government maintain that the bill is consistent with international law? It's true that Article 16 of the Northern Ireland Protocol does allow states, does allow the UK, to adopt what are called unilateral safeguard measures in limited and exceptional circumstances. But it's clear from the legal position paper published by the government that it doesn't intend to go down this route. And that's presumably because the very wide-ranging deviations from the protocol which it envisages wouldn't fall within the narrower criteria laid down by Article 16. Instead, the UK government seeks to rely on a different principle, the international law doctrine of necessity. This is a general principle of international law which can provide a lawful justification for the non-performance of treaty obligations. But can it provide a justification in these particular circumstances? It seems unlikely. In order to satisfy the international law doctrine of necessity, the state must be safeguarding an essential interest against a grave and imminent peril. It's hard to see how that is satisfied in these circumstances. For one thing, the imminence requirement doesn't seem to sit comfortably with the fact that the UK government is not pushing this bill through um, as an emergency piece of legislation and indeed is reported to have told the DUP party in Northern Ireland that the bill will not be enacted unless they agree to restore the power sharing executive there. Equally, the state must not have contributed to the situation that constitutes the grave and imminent peril. But again, it's very hard to see how that condition can be satisfied. It's very clear that when the UK government agreed to the protocol, it went into that with its eyes wide open. Indeed, the risk assessment that was published and additional government papers that were leaked at that time demonstrate the government knew full well that there was a real possibility the protocol would produce precisely the kind of consequences that the government now complains of. In conclusion then, it seems very likely indeed that the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill breaches international law. It envisages a very wide-ranging deviation from the protocol which doesn't appear to fit in the narrow criteria laid down by Article 16. And for reasons that I've just explained, it seems very unlikely indeed that the international law doctrine of necessity can apply in these particular circumstances. So the government appears to be showing itself willing to play fast and loose with the rule of law and to be showing little commitment to a rules-based international order. In doing so, it risks ceding moral authority, it risks showing itself to be an unreliable treaty partner, including in relation to any future trade negotiations with other countries. And it also inflicts grave reputational damage on the UK on the international stage. Dear world, yours.